Welcome to the JK Adventure Dynatrack Trail Series Rear Dana 60 Axle Build Video. This rear axle is being built for this 2008 Jeep Wrangler JK. The first step in the construction of this axle is to cut the tubes to length. I found out during this process what the difference is between the Trail Series and the Pro Rock Dana 60. They are basically the same. The difference is that although there are several different configurations you can select for a Pro Rock 60, they selected a group of options which are perfect for the Jeep Wrangler JK and packaged them under a new name. There are still some options available, but fewer than on a Pro Rock order form. The tubes are then put in the lathe and the ends trued and machined as necessary. This end is set up to slide into the pumpkin. The outside of the tube must be true and the correct diameter. The machinist is constantly checking the measurements to make sure everything is as it should be. This other end will be welded to the flange. Here he is spot welding the flange to the end of the tube. Once it is attached, the weld is continued all the way around the tube. The jig used keeps the flange flat while it is welded. Back to the lathe with the tubes to true everything up and machine the ends of the tubes to fit the bearings. As with before, everything is measured constantly to check the measurements. A chamfer is also put on the edge for the seal. Here is the end of the tube at this point in the process. This stockpile of tubes with the seas already welded on were just sitting there waiting for your order. Same goes for this pallet of pumpkins. It felt like the best Halloween ever. Now on to this little piece of machinery which will press the tubes into the pumpkin. It is pretty amazing how easy this machine makes this process look. The spreader he is putting into the pumpkin keeps the tubes from going in too far and sets the width while the deed is done. You may be thinking that the spreader is also keeping the pumpkin from being crushed, but he assured me the Dynatrack housing can take it. Can you say 1600 pounds of pressure? The angle of the flanges is not critical on a rear axle like it would be on the front. It should be close for brake alignment, but nothing else is really affected. This next piece of machinery was basically the most intense drill press I have ever seen. It was used to drill the holes for plug welds in the housing. Once again, I was assured that the press fitting of the tubes was enough, but they go the extra step to assure the strength of the axle. The vent holes are then drilled, and then another bit is used to thread the holes. Talk about fast! This same machine was also used to machine slots on both sides of the housing for a bridge in case you ever want to run a three link in the rear. While I don't picture myself ever doing so, I always also didn't picture myself getting a Dana 60. Who'd have thought? Here is the complete set of JK brackets which will be welded onto the axle. As you can see, these parts are heavy duty. And of course, here is the monster Dana 60 pumpkin. They use a setup table and jigs to hold each bracket in the proper alignment while it is tacked onto, into place. First to be installed are the lower control arm brackets. Next are the spring perches, followed by the upper control arm mounts, and finally the track bar bracket. Up to this point, the brackets have only been tack welded on. Then it is off to a master welder who completes the welds. I just had to take a picture of our name on the cart. Now onto the part which I think gives most jeepers the most nightmares. The thought of doing their own gears probably makes most jeepers shake in their boots. Well as you can imagine, Dining Track employs nothing but the best employees and their man in charge of gears was amazing. I opted for an ARB locker to match the one I have in the front Pro Rock 44. The first step is to make sure there aren't any burrs on the mating surface of the ring and clean the mounting holes for the ring on the locker. Next is to press a bearing onto the locker. To start the installation of the ring on the locker, he uses longer bolts to make sure it is lined up properly. Then a mallet will help get it seated. The long bolts are then removed and the proper ones installed. The bearing race is installed and then the seal housing. Now it is off to the vise to torque everything down. Air is also injected into the system and held to check for leaks. The bolts are torqued down in a crisscross pattern. The pinion also gets machined to provide a nice, polished surface. First the location is determined for the hole for the upper reservoir access and then center punched. This template helps them figure out the correct location for the ARB airline. Both holes are then drilled and tapped. The Dynatrack Dana 60 housing has a unique setup which has a reservoir which contains gear fluid and keeps the pinion bearings lubricated. The upper hole being drilled is to add fluid to this reservoir. Just so you know, the fluid in the top reservoir does constantly get rotated with the fluid in the differential. The oil slinger gets installed on the pinion along with the bearing in the hydraulic press. 
The pinion bearing race then gets installed on the end of the housing. To install the gears, he starts with setup parts to get all the spacing and shims correct. The pinion gets installed in the housing and the pinion nut installed. Figuring out what shims to start with comes with a lot of experience and trial and error for the newbie. The assembly gets installed in the housing with the setup bearings to check for spacing. When doing so, you have to make sure you are not hitting teeth to teeth on the ring and pinion. You don't want to damage any parts during this step. The bearing caps then get installed and the backlash is checked. Compound is then put on the ring gear to see where everything is meshing. He then spins the ring forward and reverse to check the markings. The necessary changes in shims is made and the whole thing is bolted back together. I can honestly say I was very happy such a seasoned professional was putting my axle together. Here is a shot of the passages that the fluid travels through to lube the pinion bearings. For the initial assembly, the bearings are lubed with grease to help with break-in. He also has a special tool which helps him press the outer pinion bearing. A setup yoke is also used to make sure everything is set up properly. Everything gets cleaned out really well prior to final assembly. Here we go again. This time the airline for the ARB gets cut, guided through the previously drilled hole, and capped off. Air is then shot into the locker to make sure it is holding. The pinion seal and new yoke are installed. RTV is applied to the housing and the diff cover is installed. The wheel studs are pressed into the axles with a hydraulic press. After the final assembly of the axles, the inside of the tubes are prepped for the bearing race by a coating of silicone. The bearing race is then installed, the axles slid in, and everything is bolted up for the ride home. Not done yet, everything gets a good coat of paint, and then it is ready to load up and take home. Well, that's it. Here it is sitting in my garage waiting to be installed. To see the installation process, check out the JK Adventure video on the rear dining track Dana 60 installation. Also, check out the many other installation and product testing videos at jkadventure.com. Thanks for watching.